So if people have not read Paul's draft minutes from September 22nd, we could postpone the reading the minutes. In which case, um, um, unless people have something that they want to discuss about the 106 meeting coming up and the new batch of plans today, um, the only other thing would be on member updates on the agenda and setting our next meeting and other business. So, so yeah. So I question. So I haven't gotten any notification about the 106 meeting. Can you send that to the members? Yes. I thought I did other I thought, people. I thought you did send that uh, I don't know, a week or so ago. <laughs> really? I, I might I might have, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> I might I think I saw something about that this morning in passing, but if if not, I'll well, while we're on while we're on the subject, what what is that date again? I don't go back and look at email. I think it was November fourth. Okay, right. Please verify. All right, but, but you you had a web address or something in that email. Mm -hmm. I remember the November fourth. Oh, okay. You remember that part? Oh, good. Okay, and. Simone, did you have your hand up? No, 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 I see. No, I was just gonna say it's November 4th at 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah. That ceiling looks familiar. Okay, um, <laughs> okay. Um, we can, are we gonna have other people read the minutes or should we postpone those to another time? Um, I'm hearing somebody talking in the background, but. I have not read the minutes. Bob obviously has not read the minutes. So okay. we, Lincoln has not read the minutes. Sorry. Okay. Our apologies. A, a question for me in procedure. I, I had drafted up the minutes and sent them to you, Nancy, and, and to Anne. My yes. assumption was that that you all would distribute them. Is is it is it is it up to me the minute? No, they're to... posted. The minutes are posted. The draft minutes are posted. And then I think when the minutes are finalized, we would also post them as part of my responsibility as chair. So, so as the Minutemen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't have to post them. No, but um, does everybody know to go to Concord's website? Yeah. Uh, no. We do now. I don't think yeah, we do now. <laughs> okay. I will well, just send them out when you send the meeting reminder. This is, um, yeah, that could happen. Um, this is part of the bigger problem of where are the minutes. <laughs> so, so the Concord's website has, we have an uh, Battle Road Scenic Byway page and we've been working to populate that page. I think I've said that in this committee before um, with um, basic documents and including draft minutes and, and so on and so forth. And, uh, approved minutes. There are several approved minutes now that we could be putting back up, but hopefully that will become more of a place that people go to regularly to find out about Battle Road Scenic Byway meetings and, and documents. Corridor management plan is there. Um, I forget what else, but anyway. Okay. Yeah, Richard, I, am, I am recovering, I'm recovering um, old minutes so that we can do it, but um, we need to send approved minutes to every town, each of the four town clerks. Oh, okay. Okay. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Been okay. harassed by our town clerk. People. Yeah, we're, okay. We're no, that's this. fine. That's fine. Be I mean, being harassed is a good reminder sometimes. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll postpone those. And um, we can see if there's any, any discussion uh, around the uh, Section 106 consulting party meeting on November 4th. I think it um, may follow a similar format to last time. Uh, does anybody, have people really looked at that or um, the plans? I know um, I haven't had a chance to really dive into the plans and there's, you know, so I'm not sure there's any discussion here today about that, but if other people have things they want to say about that. I guess the one thing I, I would say was the, the last time we had a, 
a, a very formal discussion on this. Uh, I was expecting that, you know, construction might be underway around now, but given that these that this meeting is coming, I'm, I'm expecting this has moved into calendar year 2023 and may even get extended beyond that. Are you, for a formal discussion, what, what are you referring to? Um, the last 106 meeting? Well, are you talking about the awarding of a contract? Yeah, we, we, you know, we, we did send in a formal letter to, yes. to the state and, yes, and uh, there was the expectation that the state would be going out with, with, with uh, requests for proposals to do the work and, and uh, that the project might actually be underway in, in my interpretation of things by, by September of this year, but. That's been pushed out a year. Yeah, and that, that's, that's the point I was making. I don't know oh. that there's been any sort of formal, um, formal message sent to Battle Road that the whole thing is pushed off by at least one year. And, who knows, maybe two, but then, then we're starting to really bump into the, the 2025 anniversary celebration. I, I think um, Josh told us about that. And then yeah. we verified, we verified it. Um, and um, what, what I understood in, um, was, I, Josh, I don't remember if it was you or somebody else in DOT, but that, you know, there's a, the bridge project there's the Route 2 Way project and the coordination between those two um, is an important thing. And then for fall of this year, we're just getting through to the 106, uh, getting through the 106 process. So that's, is that correct, Josh? In terms of the coordination? Mm -hmm. So what's the current timeline, Josh? Um, the current uh, construction date for the Route 2 project is fall of 2023. Okay. To begin construction. So uh, putting out to bid this spring? What? I believe, sorry, I believe the ad date is, uh, is next fall. That's what I had. The, the advertising date is next yeah. fall. And they're going to be done in time for... Um, that, that's my understanding. Let me okay. get in touch with the project manager. I think the project overall is fairly, from, from Mass Highway's point of view, fairly straightforward. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, anything else on that? Richard, sometimes your voice is checking out again, but Sorry. not now, that's all right. Um, so if, if we're not listening, that's why. Um, uh, I, question. I have a question. Oh, no. Sorry, go ahead. Can, can we go back to a convention of raising hands? That's yes. easier for me. <laughs> Was that Sheila? Oh, Sheila, I can see you down there. Yeah, it's hi. Um, where are the plans for the 106? I see the invitation, but I don't. Jeffrey Shrimpton sent them um, last Friday, I think. Who sent them? Can you say? Jeffrey Shrimpton, who is the, oh. um, um, he's the cultural resources guy in headquarters who has had a strong hand in this project for a while. He sent them on Friday. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think I received them. Who? And, too bad. and the question is, how Sheila, can we access those? Sheila, I can forward them to you. I'll do that now. Sure, thank um, you. Richard, uh, did you receive them? Like who and somebody no. in town should no, no, receive them? Wait, 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 wait. This went to 23 people. So um, let's see, uh, people that I'm not sure. So let's see, um, Paula, Tim Higgins, um, uh, Clarissa, Mike Barrett, Rona, Elizabeth Sherva. You know, it's interesting to read this. Um, interesting. Yeah, okay, I'll send those out to everybody. Who, who didn't That'd get them? Thank you. Oh, wow. Usually. Okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah, a uh, question, Nancy, on the uh, Route 2A project. 
Is it a pretty good assumption that there will be two crosswalks in the final plan, uh, given that? I, so I look like briefly at, at the plans, there's three. Wait, uh, where's the, which is the third? Bedford Road. Oh, okay. Because uh, we've been sort of flying blind and it, it comes up in a lot of town committee meetings and nobody knows what's going on. Uh, but we, look, look for yourself, though, um, you know, at the plans, because I looked at them very quickly. I only had them printed a couple of days ago, so I have to have them printed before I can actually deal with them constructively. Wait, where are these plans? Uh, well, the crosswalk at the ranger station, that's Bedford Lane. And uh, no, 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 no. I'm saying and, where are the documents? I'm, I'm happy to look at the plans. I didn't know there that's were. That's what I've said. I would send them around to all the committee again. Okay, thanks. I thought you already had them. But, okay. Anything else? And Chris is just writing me. Hang on a second. just a second he's not going to be able to come today uh so he doesn't have any more to update but he's saving the 27th <laughs> um he actually um there's a person that's been hired by mass dot to uh, coordinate federal programs one of the federal programs will be the national scenic byway program so there'll be a new contact person for us from uh, from that office. Do we have a name? No, I don't know. Okay, Richard, do you have your hand up to speak? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, so I did look at those plans and, um, you know, <laughs> um, they are updated, but um, you're fading, you're fading out. So reasons, I mean, there's, Richard, Richard, yeah, sorry. <laughs> we, so at these, at these, yes. No, <laughs> no, still, still can't hear you. <laughs> Nobody can hear him, right? It's not. I just, cannot hear him. No, okay. I cannot hear him. Okay. Sorry. I think um, maybe we'll wait for a discussion of this until next week. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we now know there's also no news about the National Scenic Byways Grant, but do the towns and the park have updates? Uh, we, could, we could do those. Uh, starting with Arlington, do you guys have anything to report different all this week for this meeting? Are, are, are we on the town report section here? No, because Chris isn't here and he has no further information about the grant. So, okay, uh, I'll, I'll mention I'll, I'll mention several things. One, our our foot of the rocks uh, preliminary uh, design concept project is finished. A, a final report. Um, Will be will be available shortly, and I'll send that to uh, people on the Battle Road Committee. Um, we we have begun to pivot to now thinking about sources of funding. A, a preliminary uh, grant request has gone in to the Town of Arlington Community Preservation Program Committee. Um, we'll we'll hear. We'll get some feedback on that by early November. Uh, I, I wasn't sure, and maybe you or some others could tell me if, if there's a possibility that Arlington's share of the, the National Scenic Byway grant proposal could, could provide some of that funding. I don't know if, if it was specifically mentioned in it, but it would be no. helpful for me to know that when I go back I talk think with our no. working group. I think no, that it was for the parking lot. I know it was for the parking lot, fairly explicitly. Okay, I I, I just didn't remember it. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
so uh, that, that's probably the major update. Any of you driving through town may have seen some construction equipment on the grounds of the Jason Russell house. We had a blockage in the in the feeder line that that carries uh, the uh, wastewater out out to the town sewer system. So we had yep. to bring someone in to uh, to clear out and, and replace that line. A fairly expensive proposition, oh, but I think we're we're back up and running now. And uh, the tour tours for the Jason Russell House will run for another couple of weeks, and then then we shut down for the winter season. So basically, the end of October. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Lexington, is that it? That's it. All right. That's it. Yes. Thank uh, you. Lexington, any updates? You guys are so busy. <laughs> the trees are in. The trees are in. Now. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very exciting to see that, actually. Yeah. They were paving last night or yesterday. I don't think they're paving today, but they they're not they're not quite done, but it's probably in the next two weeks. And that's that area just very, very explicitly around the town center. Yes, um, up to the green and then the green has projects that are separate but related. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, they the facilities a little uncoordinated facilities has put in some interpretive and um, sort of uh, ac access improvements to access the monuments. Um, and then the the other work, I believe, is going to start. Um, I think this spring, I, I'll, I'll check on that. Um, okay. Yeah, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, it's been fun to watch, but it's not great to drive through. <laughs> <laughs> no, slows slows everybody down. <laughs> right, right. Well, I have a question for Lexington. The Miriam Street parking lot uh, uh, it gets used on the weekends for tourists and uh, just you know non-commercial purposes, and I think you are charging a fee to park in that lot even on Saturdays or at least the sign says that you are. I don't know if anybody's enforcing it. I I'm just wondering if, if that's appropriate, given that it's really uh, sort of a central parking spot for folks who want to you know, see Lexington green mm -hmm. and uh, other things in the area. Yeah, I can ask. Um, I know they suspended parking fees for for some of the construction, but I don't know if they're sus still still suspended. Uh, so you're advocating for free parking to access the historic sites. Yeah, on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I'll check. I don't know the status of the parking. Jay Con Concord is metered <laughs> all the time, except for Sunday. I think. Yeah. Well, well, hold on. In Concord, you've got that big lot. Um, on we do. Road or we Keys do Road, have some, which yeah. is totally uh, free and unmetered. Well, the isn't the Mary the Miriam Street does it, I don't know it connects to that other parking lot that is free, pretty much in the mid, isn't it in the middle behind like Pete's and CVS? Isn't there a lot of free parking? No, th those are metered. Those are metered. Yeah, it's yeah. the one. Of the, the yes. Yeah, it's okay. the ones back okay. from right. Okay, okay. Or not. Um, yeah, and actually more tidbit, um, an RFP is out to, uh, to for design concepts for um, housing above that rear parking lot. Um, I don't know when it closes, but there's been some good interest in that project. So there would be parking, parking would remain, the building would be above parking. Sheila, I'd be really interested uh, to see what kind of responses you get for that type of uh, development. Yeah. Yeah, I I can, we can let you know. Um, is, that, is that affordable housing? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah we got it our right year mark. Gotcha. To do this study. And that would be right on top of the Miriam Street lot? Yeah. Did I hear? Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
It's interesting because I remember, oh, maybe 25, 30 years ago when that lot became um, uh, an attended lot so that you could stack the cars, there was debate over whether there, there should be a second story to the parking lot, you know, an right. upper deck. <clears throat> and people didn't like that idea, but uh, I guess housing, well, I don't know, times have changed. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it, it, yes, we'll see. Um, it fits the, you know, that it helps, it potentially helps with the MBTA community's effort as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. We, we had one with similar goals in Concord last, last year. Not, not a double decker idea, but intense intensification around the commuter, the tra train station. Oh, okay. So, yeah, Nancy, do you know if they're going to bring that back to town meeting this year? I don't, I don't know, but I would think that would be premature because uh, we have our planning and land manager, chief of planning and land management retiring at the end of this year. So mm -hmm. I think that's a huge effort to review what happened there and, and how it could be improved. <laughs> in terms of passability next time around. Okay, is that it? Is it? Yeah, uh, one more. Um, they're doing um, the, the, fire, the police station. They're pre prepping for demo. Um, oh, and actually the Hosmer house next to the police station um, has received permits from the Zoning Board of Appeals and the planning board just last night, so they're all going to be in um, appeal periods to move the Hosmer house down to, I uh, can't remember the address, on down, way down Waltham Street. Off the, of Blossom Crest. Yes, off, off of Blossom Crest. To move it. Wow. Yes, yes. And it's so, in the original location now. Uh, no, I think it's it was oh. moved. Uh, oh. Where I thought, Jean, do you know the original location? I thought was near the Battle Green. I I don't know. I mean, it was it, it used to be configured differently. I don't know whether where it was originally. Yeah, interesting. Uh, and just a, go ahead. A question: What's what's going in into the land where the police station is is being demolished from? Bigger police New station. Oh, a new one. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, Lexington Lincoln. Um, well, I've been currently involved in doing a new comprehensive pedestrian and bicycle master plan with um, that committee, which has been a, a, a big, big lift and they're going into their public forum time where they're going to have all kinds of neighborhood meetings and a big public forum. And along with that, we're doing a new updated complete streets prioritization plan. So that's been very interesting. We've been going over the crash data um, and the most dangerous intersection in all of Lincoln is Bedford Road and 2A. How about that? Wow. Hmm. Yep. Bicycles and vehicle crashes, pedestrian and vehicle crashes. Um, and we're really looking to be able to find, to create safe crossings, um, especially the neighborhoods north of 2 and 2A to for those people to be able to access the amenities and the services of the town. So it's, it's been very interesting. And uh, Bob, do you have anything you want to uh, add? Actually, to I, I guess I have a question for Simone. Do we have any statistics on visitation to the park? How much of it comes from people <clears throat> who live, you know, within the uh, adjacent communities versus people coming from elsewhere. Because my, my feeling is that the park gets a lot of life from folks who uh, live nearby and use it every day, that there really wouldn't be a lot of um, 
uh, sort of uh, vibrant feeling to, to it without those local residents. Do you have any statistics on that? No, our visitation numbers aren't broken down that way. So in terms of trying to delineate between uh, local users and out of town visitors. So the way our visitation numbers are generated is we have a multiplier based on uh, the number of cars that uh, actually access our lots. Um, we have uh, you know folks sort of drive over the tube and then it registers that way. Um, over the last 10 years, we're averaging over a million visitors. Uh, but again, we don't break it down between local visitors and out-of-town visitors. I suppose if we wanted to be big brother-ish, we could take license plate numbers and figure out where the cars come from. But, uh, <laughs> that, but that, that, that's not my idea. I'm just, just saying. They, 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 they could be rental cars. I mean, what difference does it make? True, true. And, and that is not um, yeah, it's not a uh, an approach <laughs> that the that the park would would take. Although I've heard it being implemented elsewhere. I can't remember right now where because it's a it's an interesting question. Where are your visitors coming from? So yes, I mean, we have been in discussions with our visitor use and statistics office um, because our multiplier is quite old, um, the formula that was developed. Um, and it's not necessarily accurately in our, um, anecdotally, we don't think we're capturing all the visitors that we are having come to the park, um, in particular uh, visitors that are not coming by car. Um, uh, another way that folks are accessing us are directly either on foot or by bike. Um, so we don't have the technology right now in terms of uh, documenting our trail users. That is something we're looking at um, to see if we can get some of that um, funding to, to get that technology to have it set up at the trailheads and access points. Um, but broadly, we are looking to um, sort of update our multiplier, at least for our vehicular um, access visitors um, and hoping to be able to launch that year long study uh, in 2023. Also, um, lots of canoe traffic and kayaks and whatnot. So a lot of people coming other than by vehicles and buses, blah, <laughs> so big, they're getting so big. Um, okay, Concord, Beth, do you have, you have something to report on the, on the, uh, trolley ride. Yeah, um, I can also just um, add some information to the discussion we were just having about where people are coming from. The visitor centers collect that data um, and we reported it to MAPC when they did the economic impact study, which was Concord, Lexington and Arlington. So there is data available. It's not at the scale that the parks have. So I don't have a million people's worth of data. I probably have, you know, 15, 20,000 people worth of data a year. Um, but I can tell you for Concord, um, it is maybe 25% local traffic and 50%, probably 80% regional. Um, and then the rest are throughout the whole country. We probably have close to 25% total represented from all 50 states. Um, and this year, our international travel is up. It used to be maybe 1%. And it's probably five or six percent this year, which is a big jump overall. Um, so we do collect that. I know Lexington collects it at their visitor center. I collect it here. Um, we don't do a great job analyzing it just because of the time required. Um, but there is some of that data. So if that's ever of interest to the byway, um, we can share the MAPC study or Nancy can send that out or um, any of the visitor centers um, can send that out. Um, and to Nancy's point, the trolley, we have one month left in the pilot program. It ends on Sunday, November 13th, which is the weekend right after Veterans Day. And um, effective Tuesday this week, we got an actual trolley. Um, Joseph's had um, worked really hard to get one. It is hybrid electric, ADA compliant, and a bike rack. Um, and it looks awesome. Um, <laughs> It is branded with just a very small sign because we didn't want to pay to rebrand an entire trolley, um, but you can't miss it. Um, it looks fabulous. It's brand spanking new, like new car smell new. Um, 
and it, it looks really great. So um, yeah. Um, Excellent. I've seen it. <laughs> so it looks great. It's running for another month. Hop on, hop off, ride around. It's kind of fun. Okay. Um, anybody else? Um, if we move on to the next meeting, uh, folks can keep the 27th open. Hopefully we'll hear something about the grant we had initially thought uh, late September, early October, but that seems not to be happening. And I will send around um, the uh, <clears throat> drawings from Jeffrey Shrimpton to everybody this morning. Any other business? Uh, public comment, we have some people who, who are here that might want to say something. Um, time, time for you guys, two people I see. Okay, quiet. All right, thank you. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, Arlington. Do we have to do roll call vote anymore, Anne? Yes. Even if we have everybody? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Math master of meetings. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Lexington. Yes. yes. Jean said yes. Lincoln. Hi. Um, Concord. Beth, Beth and I vote yes. <laughs> and the park. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, and I guess we'll continue to wait. I, I have this terrible feeling that everything is going to coalesce around the period between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. But that seems to be normal. <laughs> so thank you. See you Thank later. you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs>